Folks, in our last segment, we used GIS, ArcGIS specifically, to examine the direction that these slopes uh, of ski areas face. Uh, we saw that with very limited uh, numbers of tools. We haven't really used the full extent of our GIS, and that's what's good about GIS. We, we don't have to, just like any other tool, you don't have to use every single tool. It's sort of a use as you need to use basis, just like Word or Excel or any other application that you happen to be using. With, with uh, all the stuff that we've done so far, we've done some zooming, we've done some panning, we've looked at tables, we've changed the symbology, we have sorted the tables, we have run a buffer, we have done a selection, uh, but really when you think about all the things that we've done thus far, it really is about a dozen or so uh, tools. And, but, so that's, the good news is that we're really not using a ton of tools, we're using some tools in a powerful way. I think more importantly though is we've used these tools to really spark inquiry-based education with real-world data, in this case Colorado ski areas, to get the students to think about spatial relationships, spatial patterns, the whys of where. Now in this next segment we want to continue with our discussion on the direction that the ski slopes face. And we saw that while we can do that somewhat in the two-dimensional world, uh, I'm going to go ahead and lower or minimize my ArcGIS session. I'm going to go ahead and, and fire up my ArcGIS Explorer. So find on your computer your ArcGIS Explorer. Okay. Now in my case I got it, I'm going to fire it up and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, open up my Colorado Ski Areas NMF. Okay, NMF file. Now in your Ski Areas folder, so, which is where I'm looking right now, I have a a file called Colorado Ski Areas uh, NMF. So if I do a, a type, if I sort on type here, I'm going to have an NMF file here. And um, here is my NMF file. So if I double click that, I'm going to fire up ArcGIS Explorer. ArcGIS Explorer, as you can see here, is a three dimensional virtual globe. Uh, browser. Oops, here we go. And it looks similar to other virtual globes uh, in the sense of uh, that it, it allows you to visualize uh, the Earth in 3D. And it's quite powerful. Uh, others include uh, Google Earth and uh, NASA World Wind. This is uh, again something called ArcGIS Explorer. Think of it as a virtual globe plus. This this virtual globe lets you look at your GIS layers and data in a, in a more powerful way. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> look at Colorado ski areas. When I pull up that project, okay, for the ski areas, I see in my contents, and if you don't see those, you can toggle these uh, or you can kind of raise and lower the left side. I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, ski areas of Colorado. And I'm starting to see here sure I can do all the standard stuff that I do in a virtual globe but I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on Colorado okay there's my there's my cities oops I'm drifting a little bit here there we go oh alright I'm going ahead and turn on the continental divide I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the rivers and the highways okay that's what I've got loaded in here so I want to zoom in and I've got a if I hover over the zoom and pan and tilt tools. I can go ahead and zoom in a little bit more um, because our goal here is to take a look in three dimensions at the ski areas. Okay, because I really want to find out about this whole north facing slope. You know, it's one thing if my teacher says that they're facing north and we've talked about it in class, but I really want to, I really want to delve into it. I really want to find out. I really want to prove or disprove this whole hypothesis that ski areas are oftentimes, most often, lo located on north facing slopes. So let's go ahead and pan down to the areas that we were looking at earlier. Uh, Aspen Mountain and Snow Mass. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and zoom in there. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and tilt a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to drag this north arrow around. 
so that I'm looking where north is at the bottom, which means that at south is at the top. So I'm looking due south. Okay. If I zoom in <clears throat> enough, I can actually ski the, see the ski ski runs at uh, Snowmass, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So there's my ski runs. I can actually visualize what would be the black diamond um, runs and which would be the blues and which would be the greens. Pretty nifty. Okay. Another thing I can do, though, more related to our, our uh, question at hand, is, okay, I can see now that, that all of these that I'm looking at right now are on the north-facing slope. So I, this one right here, buttermilk, yeah, it looks like it's going to be off toward the lower left. In my case, I'm looking due south. Ask the students, what is my lower left? My lower left is going to be north and east, so it's the northeast facing. So it's northeast facing. Not due north, but close. Okay, let's go ahead and go ahead and zoom back around to due north, which is this one right here, reset north. Okay, so is that true everywhere? With we we said that there were 22 ski areas. I'm going to zoom out now and look at that cluster of ski areas I was looking at earlier in the lesson. Okay, let's take a look. Let's take a look here. Okay, there is um, Copper Mountain and Breckenridge. Okay. One of the things I can do is, you know, it's kind of hard to see. What I might do is reset north, drag and zoom out, go back to Colorado, and let's go ahead and do this. In my tools options, Okay, I've got some some uh, options in there. Okay, and I wanted to make sure that you knew that you could change any of these symbols inside tools options, symbol size, etc. So if you don't like the size of the cities or the ski areas in white, you can go ahead and change that. Uh, but what what I want to do right now though is go to File Map Properties uh, because one of the things I want to do is is uh, in my map properties there's something called environment and the vertical exaggeration right now it's set to 10. I'm going to bump that up just ever so slightly and I'm going to say OK there. I'm just going to bump it up to the next uh, marking there because now if I zoom in what I want is for the verticals to be exaggerated just a little bit more so that I can see uh, more clearly the, uh, the, the slopes. Okay. So that's all I've done. Now I'm going to, yeah, I'm panning around, I'm going to tilt this a little bit. Okay, so, all right, this is looking better. Okay. As I zoom and pan around, I can see that, yeah, Copper Mountain is north facing, but Breckenridge here looks like it's east facing. The issue, though, that you can bring up with the students is that look how close it is to the Continental Divide, which is in yellow here. Ski areas can be not always due north or northeast or northwest facing, if they're high enough in elevation, right? And let's take a look at uh, this up here by the Continental Divide. I'm going to go ahead, boy, look at this. This is fascinating. Because as I look here, I can see that Arapaho Basin is actually mostly south facing. Now, How can that be? Well, remember earlier we talked about Arapaho Basin having the highest skiable terrain in Colorado. We also measured it earlier and found out that this part of the Arapaho Basin was only one mile from the Continental Divide. So it's quite high. And because it's quite high, uh, the ski runs can be facing due south, which is nice. Um, has snow on it up into June sometimes and is able to be open until June. So what we've done in this segment is we've used ArcGIS Explorer, a 3D virtual globe, to take a tour of ski areas in the state. And we've looked at north-facing versus south-facing slopes. There's a lot more we could do with 3D visualization. But I wanted to start there so that you can kind of get a feel for this free tool that lets you do all the things that you've been used to using uh, virtual globes for, but also you can import your GIS data. And the way I did that here was I actually loaded data by doing File Open, 
and then I actually navigated to where I have shape files. Um, and I navigated on my computer to where I've got different shape files located. And then I loaded those inside my project, which I've saved here, and called it Colorado Ski Areas.